Your research says skin color is a human adaptation in response to the exposure of the sun's UV rays. Let's start with some basics. What are the advantages to having darker skin near the equator? The earth is bathed with ultraviolet radiation. And it turns out that the UV is particularly high near the equator where our ancestors are from and where the earliest members of our own species, Homo sapiens evolved and where we have spent most of our time in history. Dark skin turns out to be the best possible sunscreen protective against the harmful effects of ultraviolet radiation. Nature has used it many times in many different organisms and it's used it in humans. Basically, the dark pigmentation, melanin, is this superior natural sunscreen that absorbs ultraviolet photons, energy, and is dark in color. So it absorbs visible light and ultraviolet radiation. Melanin, because it is protective against many aspects, many harmful aspects of ultraviolet radiation exposure, protects against one really critical one, which is the breakdown of the vitamin called folate, which we get when we eat green vegetables and citrus fruits and whole grains. Folate turns out to be incredibly important to the making of DNA, which is the inheritance machinery in all of our cells. It's also really important for repairing DNA. So folate is one of these comprehensively important molecules that's really essential to life. So if there's so many advantages to dark skin, why are we not all dark skinned? Around 60,000 years ago, a few populations of people started moving out of the tropics, out of these really heavy UV rich areas into areas with much less sun and much more seasonal UV. And under those conditions, having a lot of melanin in the skin actually wasn't healthy. Having too much natural sunscreen actually prevented some UV rays from penetrating the skin. We know that some wavelengths of ultraviolet radiation are actually needed in the body for beginning the process of producing vitamin D in the skin. If you live under really sort of cloudy and out of the tropics sun conditions, you don't get very much of these important wavelengths during the year. So it turned out in evolution to be very important that loss of pigmentation occur. So around the world, we see people who have lightly pigmented or more appropriately, depigmented skin. That's really interesting. So there seems like there was an interesting intersection of two forces that, that helped you visualize the, the work for you. I'm um, yeah. looking at data from NASA and as any good husband-wife situation, your husband's expertise in geography played a role. Can you tell us about that? It played a huge role. Uh, his interest and expertise in geography and his ability to take some important data sets that we received from NASA, and we were able to actually see just the magnitude of difference in the intensity of ultraviolet radiation between the equator, the tropics, and the close to the poles. That's amazing. So if you back map the Earth's sphere, you see levels of UV and that correlates with the lightness or darkness of your skin. I yeah, that. That, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's, it's such a cool relationship. It turns out that that ultraviolet radiation intensity accounts for over 85 percent of the variation in skin color that we see in the world's indigenous peoples. So by far, the vast majority of, of skin color has been caused by natural selection uh, in relation to ultraviolet radiation levels. What's your take on race and the social construct? Where, where do you land? 
Race is a social construct, but that doesn't make it any less real. We created these social constructs and we've been living with them more or less globally in various variations for hundreds of years. And so they are part of the way that we think and sort of in the atmosphere. What we can do is recognize that now and work toward a world that isn't framed in this way.